And here's Pastor Jay. Hello, Community Alliance Church. This is uh, Pastor Jay uh, and uh, my friends out there as well. Another Sunday, a wonderful Sunday today. Hey, how are you doing out there today? I was thinking just the other day, if, if you hear my voice and you are not a regular attender of a church and you've been hearing my messages, and if you don't have a pastor that uh, is there for you, I just wanted you to know, just in case I forget toward the ending, my name is Pastor Jay from the Community Alliance Church in Bloomsburg, PA. My number is 570-784-6161. If you have any questions regarding the messages you're hearing, if you need to talk, if you need prayer, feel free to call me, Pastor Jay, 784-6161. Amen. I, I did want to today, um, I've mentioned to some of you via email that I wanted to have communion today. It is a special day today. And so I wanted us to partake of communion together. Remember, communion is a commandment given by Jesus, and he told us to do this in remembrance of me. And so uh, I wanted to have this time of communion. And the Bible says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he looked up and he thanked the Father. And then he told the disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's partake together. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And he told the disciples, do this when you do it in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. Amen, amen, amen. So let me just tell you, I walked into a Walmart just the other day and I was looking around at the shelves in the areas where the products that we mostly purchase on a normal basis are. And I noticed that a lot of the shelves uh, were empty uh, or the ones that weren't certainly needed some more stock in there. And then I walked into that section that's designated to you know, Easter, Easter things, Easter Sunday and things like that. And I was shocked or I was surprised rather to, to see that Practically every area of the shelves were filled, pretty, pretty much to overflowing. It looked as if no one purchased anything whatsoever. And then I, I thought to myself for a while and I realized that I wasn't really all that surprised. With all that's going on in our world, it, it, it's hard to find something to celebrate about. But I want to share with you today uh, something that is worth celebrating, even in the days we're going to, through today. In fact, I want to talk to you about someone who's worth celebrating regarding things that he offers and who he represents and what he represents. I want to talk to you about that today. But before I do that, I want to just to encourage you parents, grandparents, uh, caretakers. Uh, this is a special day for the kids. I don't know if you normally take them to church with the Easter egg hunt and all that, but it's a special day for them. And I want to encourage you to have some fun with the kids today. If it's not an Easter egg hunt, uh, find something else that they can hunt on this Easter day so that they can have a, a fun time. Reward them and uh, enjoy your time with them. They deserve it. I also wanted to say if your children are not home, you can give them a call and let them know how much you love them and maybe even talk with them about Jesus. Amen? Amen. But, but today, um, what I want to do today is not talk so much about Easter Sunday. I want to talk to you more about Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and last week we spoke about what happened up until the cross. Today I want to talk about what happened after the cross, what's happening today, and what is yet to happen. But before I do that, I want to draw your attention to our springboard text for today. It's found in the uh, John chapter 18, verse 37. We'll read it from the NASB Bible today. John 18, verse 37. And the word of God today, it's involving Pilate, who is the, the governor of the Roman province of Judea, and Jesus. And a question he asks Jesus, listen to the verse, John 18, 37. Therefore, Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say correctly that I'm a king. For this I have been born, 
and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Jesus responds to his question. Before we go, any, we go any further, would you please bow your heads and join me in prayer? The title to today's message is Cling to the King. Cling to the King. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Uh, we invite you to guide us and direct us. Holy Spirit, you know every person that is seated uh, before this message. And I pray for him, for her, and for them. Uh, that you would prepare their hearts, prepare all of our hearts, God, for your word today. Enable us to hear soft in the soil of our hearts. Bring our minds, our hearts, and our conscience into your presence. And Holy Spirit, guide these words for the glory of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Or you're st some of you are seated. Some of you are standing. Anyway, let me just say this. Uh, uh, let me draw your attention back to last week's message for a moment. If you remember, we spoke about how Jesus entered into Jerusalem riding on a, on a donkey. And, 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 and we learned how he did not come to rule and to reign at that time, but he came instead to set the stage, not just in the hearts and the lives of the people that, that were there before him, but to set the stage in our own hearts for what we so desperately need today. And so I do... You know, we, we are thankful to the fact that Jesus on that day was willing to humble himself and to come as a servant in order to set the stage for what God had for him and for us. In fact, had Jesus not done that, we would be doomed, you, me, and the whole world as a whole. And so if you remember last week in reference to Jesus, we said that, that Jesus was not born like a king. We said he didn't live like a king, nor did he die like a king. By the way, that message is available on a church website. It's part one to this message, and it's entitled The Deprived King. The Deprived King. But Jesus was king, but he did not come to be a king at that time. And so the people, they wanted Jesus to exercise his kingship and his authority right there and then. But they failed to understand that Jesus, before he came as king, he had to come as Savior. And in becoming a Savior, what Jesus did was he became like one of us. That is, he died for sin in, o in order that we would become like, like him, sons and daughters and children of God. And that's why John 1.12 says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Now notice that, uh, believing is not necessarily enough. To say, I believe in Jesus, according to that verse, is not enough. In fact, the devil in James 2.19 believes, and, and we know he's not saved, but is believing to the point that we receive. If we believe truly, we receive. If we don't receive, we're not believing the way God would have us to believe. And so the people wanted Jesus to come for them at that time, but he came not for the temporary thing of that day, but he came for what he's doing and wants to do in all of our lives. And so Jesus died. He had to die on that cross in order to save us from our sins. Now, you remember that I had mentioned from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7? Well, let me just add verse 8 to that. It kind of sets the stage of the fact that our Savior, he had to, he had to die. So it says in reference to Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Yes, he died, and it's all over the scriptures. In fact, in Matthew 27, 50, it says that Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and he gave up his spirit. In, Matthew, in Mark 15, verse 25, it says that it was the third hour, or Jewish time, 9 a.m., when Jesus was nailed to the cross, when he was crucified. In Luke 23, and verse 46, Jesus says to the Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, and he breathed his last. And in John 19, and verse 30, Jesus says, 
it is finished, he bows his head and gives up his spirit. And so, yes, Jesus died. He had to die. But five days after his entrance into Jerusalem, something happened. In fact, I want you to say to someone in that room with you right now, say, but on the third day, even if you're alone, say, but on the third day, you see this Jesus who is not born like a king, who did not live like a king, and who not, did not die like a king, on the third day, he rose as king. That's right, Jesus rose as king. Let me read to you from Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and hates. Jesus is speaking there, and it's biblical. This whole idea of the resurrection of Jesus is biblical. It's all over the scriptures, not just in Revelation 1.18. Let me read to you a few other verses from Matthew 28 and verse 6. Um, the women go to the, te to, to the tomb to see the body of Jesus and embalm it. And an angel appears to them and says to them, he is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he was lying. In Luke 24 and verse 6, two angels appear to the women and they say, he is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee. And then in Mark 16 and verse 6, a young man dressed in white, who we believe was an angel, said to the women, do not be alarmed. He, you, are, you are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay him. And in Matthew 16 and verse 9, Jesus appears first to Mary Magdalene. In verse 12, he then appears to two others. And in verse 14, he appears to disciples. Yes, it's biblical. But not only that, the, resurrection of, Je the, the resurrection of Jesus is, is also historical. It's factual. In fact, Josephus, who is a, a non-Christian Jewish historian, who was born about four years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in his many writings, gives testimony both to the crucifixion and resurrection to the empty tomb. In fact, throughout history, many have arisen to try to attempt to disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the claims of Christianity uh, and in the process have always come up short or empty with not substantially enough of a foundation. Some have even in their attempt to disprove the resurrection and the claims of Christianity have found Jesus and came to him, gave their lives and became followers of Jesus Christ. One of them is Frank Morrison, who is a lawyer who went out to prove that Jesus did not rise from the dead in every way that he could and eventually found Jesus. He wrote a book, Who Moved the Stone? I recommend if you have any questions on the resurrection of Jesus, there's a good book to get. C.S. Lewis was another one. He was an atheist who also wanted to prove that there is no such thing as God. And he searched and searched and read through the scriptures. And he himself found God and became a great dynamic author and speaker of God's word. Josh McDowell was another one. He was an atheist who, while in college, noticed a group of Christians that would sit in the corner in the library all the time, and they would read the Bible, and they would pray together, and he went out his way to prove them wrong. He searched and searched, and eventually found that Jesus Christ is real, is alive, and so is God, and Josh McDowell became one of, is one of the better apologetics of our day. In fact, he wrote many books, but there's two that, two that get my attention, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, the powerful books, I recommend those are good books to get if you need to know more about the resurrection and the living Christ and his God. So it's biblical, it's historical, but, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ is also personal. It's experiential. It really is. In fact, Jesus says in John 10, 38, if you don't believe that I am who I claim to be, then at least believe in the miracles themselves. Jesus is reminding the people of his day, look at the things that I've done. Look at the lives that I've changed. Look at the people and how they're living now in comparison to how they used to live. One of the most powerful proofs for the resurrection of Jesus has to be the disciples. Every one of them testify to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
and just about every one of them was put to death for his faith in Jesus. And, and so who would want to die for something that was fabricated or that wasn't true? But to me, my biggest proof for the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what he's done in my life. Yes, he's taken me from this life and brought me over to this life. Jesus has filled my own heart with joy and meaning and purpose. And because of that, I know that no death Christ could change my heart and change my life like Jesus did. Yes, and so, and so the one who was not born like a king, who did not live like a king, and who did not die like a king, rose as king. But not only that, I want you to notice also that he reigns as king. He reigns as king. Let me read to you from uh, the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 31 and 33. Luke 1, verses 31 and 33. It says, You will be with child and give birth to a son, speaking to Mary, and you are to give him the name Jesus. And in verse 33, and he, that is Jesus, will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And so the, the, the good, the interesting thing is here that the word used for reign here is, is the Greek word uh, basileo. And when used in reference to Jesus, because it's also used in the Bible in reference to darkness and into the reign of the disciples in the future, the followers of God. But when it's used of Jesus, it's referring to total, complete preeminence over everything and everyone. It's referring to supreme supremacy, dominion, authority over everything and everyone. In other words, what he says goes when he talks, people listen. That's the word that is being used here. He reigns. Now, we know that uh, after the tribulation, Jesus himself will establish his kingdom and for a thousand years will rule and reign on earth uh, after the tribulation. We know that. And so during that time, the devil will be bound and peace and harmony would be the order of the day as Jesus sits on his throne. That's the ultimate reign, though it'll get better in Revelation 21. However, Jesus also wants to reign today and does reign today in the hearts and lives of his followers if we let him. So in Romans 14, 17, Paul says that, that the kingdom of God is about righteousness. That it's, it's, it's about submitting to the one who lives within the hearts and lives of his people. Let me ask you a question. Who sits on the throne of your heart today? Who runs the shots of your life? Does your life revolve around him or does it revolve around you? You know, before I invited Jesus to be my king and to take residence in my heart by way of his spirit, I sat on the throne of my heart. Uh, I was my king, or at least I thought I was. I ran the shots. I made the decisions of my life. At least I thought I ran the shots. Um, boy, was I wrong. And then I found Jesus, and he has filled the void. He has provided a direction and purpose and meaning in life. He makes the difference. And so I ask you the question today, uh, who's running the shots of your life? Who's leading, who's guiding, who's directing your life? Is it, is it King Jesus? Is it King Jesus? In fact, let, let, let me just uh, let you know that in reality, none of us runs our own lives. We, we can't be our, our own kings. There is one in the Bible. He's found in John 14, 30. He's also a prince. Do you know that? He's actually called the prince of this world, the prince of darkness. And often it is him that is playing the king in our lives when it's not Jesus, though he doesn't want us to know that. And as long as you think that you are the king of your own life, if not Jesus, he has you exactly where he wants you. But you know something? It's a, it's a lie. The void remains. The emptiness, the lack of fulfillment and purpose and direction in life remains there. It doesn't go away. It might here and there, but it comes back and visits us again. But you know something? It doesn't have to be like that. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, according to 1 John 3 and verse 8. 
In Isaiah 54, 17, it says that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And in 1 John 4 and verse 4, it says, Greater is he who is in you, that's Jesus, the king, than in he who is of the world, that's the prince of darkness. And so we can know Jesus. We can be guided by him. Let me ask you again one more time. Who's the king of your heart? Who's the king of your life? Who are you following? Who's running the shots? Who's in control? Because the one who is not born like a king and the one who did not live like a king and the one who did not die like a king rose as king, reigns as king. And I want you to notice lastly that he will return as king. Jesus will return as king. Notice Revelation 19, verses 11 and 16. It says, I saw heaven standing open. There before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. Verse 16, on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And that verse is referring to Jesus. In fact, this this actual section here is the section that eschatologists or teachers of end times refer to as the Battle of Armageddon. It's that event that happens right after the tribulation and right before the, the 1,000 year reign of Christ. It's that time when the Antichrist, also known as the beast, along with the false prophet, also known as the other beast of Revelation chapter 13, will gather together their armies and come to battle against Jesus and his army. And, and, and both of them will be overtaken by Jesus, obviously. And the Bible says that both of them, that is the beast, the other beast and the Antichrist, so the false prophet and the Antichrist, will be thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. And they will suffer there eternally. And then, of course, right following that comes that 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. And immediately following that comes what we call the Battle of Armageddon, where Satan, who is bound, will be let loose. And he will gather his army and come to fight against God and his army. And he's immediately destroyed as fire comes down from the heavens. And Satan himself is thrown into that fiery lake of burning sulfur along with us so he can join the antichrist and the false prophet and then of course the people who followed god and rejected jesus as king and the resurrected one those people will be judged their names will not be found in the book of life this is in revelation chapter 20 and there at the great white throne judgment they will be judged according to the choices that they've made but there we have jesus the one who comes King of kings and Lord of lords in verse 16 of Revelation 19. His kingdom will never ever end. It will last forever and ever and ever. So he, 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 he rose as king. That's past tense, right? He reigns as king, present tense, and he will return as king, future tense. And so there was a whole lot of commotion there at the cross of the resurrected of Christ before he resurrected as he was put to death on that Friday. And, and there was one person who cried out and who said to him, you know, you, you're, the, you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And then others said things like, he saved others, let him save himself. If he's the king of the Jews, let him come down from the cross and we will follow him, we will believe. But again, they fail to realize that Jesus did not come that first time to conquer as a king. He came instead to do something in the heart and lives of the people that lived his day, but even the people that are living today, that's you and me and all people today, he came to do something in our lives so that we can be assured of the hope that we can have in Jesus. And so, and so Jesus this had to be the most or the, one of the most dynamic fulfilled prophecies of scripture that Jesus would be crucified on a cross and three days later rise from the dead. And he did it as a payment or God's way of paying or satisfying the demands of a holy God so that you and I can be assured of one day being 
in God with heaven, in, God, in heaven with God. Let me ask you a question. If you died tonight, where would you go? Should this coronavirus come and overtake your life, where would you go? Because Jesus came to set the stage so that you would know that when that time comes, whether it's now or in 10 years, that you would know where you're going to go. In fact, it says it well in 1 John 5, 11, 12, and 13. It, it, it says that in him we have life, and that life, with, that, that life is found in Jesus, so that you may know, verse 13, 1 John 5, that you have eternal life. Do you know you have eternal life? Do you know you belong to him? See, the King of Kings came into this world, took your place and my place on the cross, so that you and I can become like him and be assured of the hope of heaven. Yes. I want to finish by reading a story today to you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a closing thought from a person named uh, Charles Coulson. He writes these words. When I was in, Mos in Moscow in 1990, preaching at the Moscow Baptist Church, uh, just blocks from the, from the Kremlin, I told a packed crowd of worshipers that all through human history, as far as recorded time and doubtless before, kings and princes, tribal chiefs and presidents and dictators have sent their subjects into battle to die for them. Only once in human history has a king not sent his subjects to die for him but instead died for his subjects. This king is the king who introduces the kingdom that cannot be shaken because this king reigns eternally. That's Jesus. Every other king would have people die for him. Jesus came and died for his subjects. He set the stage for the hope that we have in him. So let me ask you a question. Who's your king? You see, this one wasn't born like a king, and he didn't live like a king, nor did he die like a king. But praise God that he rose as king, he reigns as king, and he will return as king. So who's your king today? Who's your king today? Is it King Jesus? And if it's not, who is your king? And let me ask you the question. Has he been faithful to his promises? Has he fulfilled his promises to you? King Jesus reigns. We'll return. The tomb is empty. Cling to the king. I want to give you a chance this day before I close by giving you a chance to, to pray. If you're here today listening to me and you would say, you know what, I, I want Jesus to be my king. I want him to be my savior. I want him to be my Lord. I realize that he died on the cross for my sins and that because of him and through him, I can have the hope of heaven. And I want Jesus to be my savior. I want you to pray with me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on that cross for my sins. Thank you for Good Friday and for what happened that day. I realize more today uh, that you are the king. I've been the king of my life. Or I've allowed something or someone else to be the king of my life. But I realize that, uh, that uh, there's no foundation there that is worth holding on to. Everything crumbles. Lord Jesus, I receive you today as my king, as my savior, as my Lord. Help me to follow you and to trust you amidst everything that is going on right now. Give me your peace in knowing that I belong to you and that my life is in your hand. And I thank you and receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And maybe you're out there and Jesus is your Savior, and he is your King, but you haven't been walking with him. Maybe you've wandered from Jesus, and you know that. And Jesus, during this time, this pandemic period, is calling you back to reconnect with him. He wants to give you his peace and his hope. And so I want you to also pray and invite, you, invite him to, to be again the one that guides your life. Thank him for being your savior and ask him to guide your life. Listen, if you prayed any of those prayers, if you need to talk, if you have any questions, 
If you need prayer about anything that I've said, if you've received Jesus, I want to pray with you. I want to send you some literature. I want to guide you into going to a church where you're going to grow and learn about Jesus when that time comes. So give me a call. Pastor J, Community Alliance Church in Bloomsburg, PA, 570-784-6161. Hey, thank you again for listening to me. There will be questions given at the end of this message as you scroll down so that you with your family or with as couples or individually can think about what God said and think about some of the questions and answers to that. Thank you. Let me take a moment to pray for you. Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your life. Thank you for your faithfulness. Holy Spirit, your word says that without you, we cannot believe. Without you, we cannot attain. Without you, we cannot understand. And so, Holy Spirit, I commit every person that is hearing this voice right now in the name of Jesus, that you would place your word within their very hearts, that you would guide and direct them, and that, Father, you would bring glory to Jesus in their lives. I pray for any that might have received you as Savior, that are wrestling with that right now, that you would bind every lie and attempt of the devil, the prince of darkness. We rebuke his works and his activities in the lives of people that are lost from Jesus, and we pray for freedom and direction, and that, Lord, these lives will be submitted to Jesus for your glory in their lives. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your prayers and for being with us, and look forward to hearing from you next week. God bless you.